Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Rishi. I am the co-founder and CEO of Pocket Health. Uh, I know some faces in the crowd here from some of the great work that we've been doing across the United States and Canada and improving our providers and patients access and share medical imaging. And for those of you who don't know us yet, Pocket Health is the simplest and most efficient diagnostic image sharing platform on the market. I co-founded Pocket Health six years ago with my brother, Harsh, he's in the back there, he's the, um, C our CTO as well. Um, we're, be we're doing demos all day at the IAP Imaging AI in practice over there by the AI Showcase. So, uh, you know, we're competing a bit for who can get the most traffic, so don't leave my presentation yet, but you can go over after. Um, I've been coming to RSNA for, for quite a few years now, and we've really seen how technologies have evolved and how patient centricity has become so much more of a focal point for healthcare institutions over time. But when it comes to medical imaging, we're still having the exact same conversation that we used to. We're still solving for interoperability. We're still solving for network problems. And patients are still being asked to bring CDs of their imaging along with them to all of their different medical imaging appointments, despite hundreds of thousands of dollars invested by all these institutions into solving this problem through IT. And, and let me ask you this, how many here are on an image sharing network of some type or relying on a network to be able to share imaging with patients? And how do you retrieve images from other providers or send images to other providers if that provider is not part of that network that you already put all this effort into adopting and uh, layering in? And do you feel like you're a salesperson for the image exchange vendor that you then are paying 500 grand a year to adopt at your hospital to convince all the other referring physicians and patients to join it so you can hopefully never burn a CD again, which you end up doing anyways? So what we've seen is that image transfer between providers continues to be a major challenge and the way that the industry is trying to solve it is building network upon network. So at a time when companies like Amazon, Uber, Google are making it actually easier and easier to access information and take it with you wherever you go, I literally know exactly where my Uber Eats order is and whether they're on a bike or in a car and what turn they're on. But meanwhile, healthcare is paralyzed by networks and other data technologies like portals that impede the simple, I would say borderless transportation of a patient's medical imaging. And when a provider needs to reach into a site that's outside of their network, they're forced into this complex workflow that adds more time, more clicks, and guess what? The CD is actually easier than all of that. So that's what ends up happening. So what then has to happen is that bigger issues come into play. Missing data, corrupt files. I think I'm preaching to the choir. There's no, is anyone here from Western Digital like the big CD cabal? Like, I don't think anyone is trying to keep those around. So at Pocket Health, we believe that image sharing, it's pretty simple, should be universal. If, my, if I have a network and it's not working, the solution isn't, oh, my network's not big enough. I think that just makes no sense. Rather than building a bigger, more complicated network, we've eliminated the reliance on image sharing networks altogether. This is literally how file sharing works in every other industry besides healthcare. It's not an innovative idea. It's how CDs work now. And we built a system that makes it that you don't have to be part of a network in order to share or retrieve imaging from other providers. And what's central to our mission is that we go to the common denominator, the patient, to actually enable all of this. We empower them to become part of the process, which enables faster, better outcomes. We enable seamless exchange between institutions, patients, providers, referring physicians, even payers. And our patient-driven, no-network platform creates efficiencies for providers by eliminating CDs and reducing clicks. Now, if you walk around here, I think you'll know that patient centricity sounds great. Let's put it on every single billboard, rotating sign that we can find. It's not a new concept, but does your image exchange actually work like that? 
Or is the patient portal just a reskinned version of the same physician portal that they built? Because that's the exact same user type, right? A radiologist and a patient. I'm being sarcastic, I guess. But <laughs> for us, patient centricity is not about engagement, but it's about efficiency. Like it's, we don't put patients at the center because it's the morally right thing to do, which it is, because patients want it, which they do, because the board likes it, which they will, because it's literally the most, from a data architecture standpoint, the most efficient way for the information to travel to its end destination, which is that specialist or that other hospital needs to import it into their packs. So we've created a system where literally most of the imaging flow on platform, we transfer millions of images every single week. The vast majority of that is through the patient to the provider on the system because no one is more invested in their care than the patients themselves and giving them access to their records is not just what they want. It literally solves this problem moving from what's on the left to what's on the right. And any of our clients will be happy to tell you about the impact that this new data architecture model has on their organization experience. I think we can go into a lot more detail at our booth. We're in booth 8012. We'll connect you with you then. But Cliff Notes, we save them money, we save them time, and we have 24-7 patient access. And with a really light IT lift and implementation timelines under six weeks, and the whole result of all of that is image sharing without borders. The problem with networks, I'm kind of on my soapbox here, I guess, literally, I'm a little short, um, is that, we, if you're, that you can't solve the network problem by building a bigger network. You'll always have that problem of receiving and sending images outside of the network, which if you think about it, is the majority of image sharing. That's not a niche problem. So no matter how big you go, you'll never have every single provider on the network. These are just a couple examples of very large institutions where we're implemented and we connect these hospitals through borderless sharing with the patient at the center. And the word is out. I've been spreading the word about how well this is working. We work with some of the largest providers in North America, more than 600 healthcare facilities. We have the largest team dedicated to image exchange in North America, nearly 100 people we don't do PACs, we don't do VNA, we don't do workflow. We literally only focus on image exchange. There is no other product that we sell, no other product in development besides how do we get these images from where they were created to where they are supposed to be and how can we use the patient as the conduit to that experience, which not only do they want, do they deserve, it's their data, it's literally the most efficient way and we've now, over seven years of operating, never lost a single one of our 600 hospitals. We've never had a down selling functionality either. So our track record speaks for itself, and we're happy to connect you with any of these large sites who are eager to spread the word about how they've been able to go to 100% zero CD. And one of the reasons we've been so successful is that we are purpose-built for every workflow and purpose-built for every user. And those are two really different things. We've designed and optimized a different experience for clerical staff, and then a completely different experience for outside care providers like referring physicians, and then a completely different experience for patients themselves. And these need to be different interfaces with different guidance, different support organizations behind them, because healthcare is not one size fits all and you can't sledgehammer an image exchange. If you think about how set CDs work, they're, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like they are beautiful, simple, they slide into every gap in the healthcare system. The patient doesn't have to be tech savvy, the, the, the doctor on the other end doesn't have to be tech savvy, they don't even need to have uh, systems on the other end besides a CD drive. If we are competing against that, your image exchange cannot be this blunt force portal and be like, just get all the doctors to sign up for it. Yeah, let's see how well that's worked over the last decade. And then meanwhile, the entire workflow has to be customized for each user as well. The workflow for a patient, like I mentioned, is different than the one for your staff members, the one for your outside care providers. And then we work seamlessly with your existing infrastructure because we know that your image exchange is not the heart of your institution. 
uh, as much as I would love to believe that. We work seamlessly with your PACs, your EMR, your HIS. We integrate into all of the major EMRs for seamless single sign-on between your MyChart or your Cerner patient portal. So the patients are all going to one spot, but then getting a diagnostic quality viewing experience, sharing with a physician and a diagnostic viewer who can actually download DICOMs with a DICOM deer, import the PACs, all of these things, but from an existing portal that they're comfortable with. And one thing, given all of this, is that it's not just about sharing images out. It's also about how do I get these priors in, which is a huge problem, especially in specialties like breast imaging. So we build record retrieval, which we launched this month. It's the fastest and most seamless way to retrieve a patient's priors without relying on, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a, I'm a broken record, C networks or CDs. So we launched it earlier this month. It streamlines patient intake for the entire hospital system where you can batch request priors for the patient before they even come in for their appointment, meaning you're sending a request to all of the places where they've previously been, where th that they've had imaging. Those places don't have to be on Pocket Health and they can upload the imaging seamlessly in a zero footprint way. Think like drag and dropping a Gmail attachment and then it can auto import into your packs, including order automation, so you can actually bill on this exam that you're importing in. And then meanwhile, we're taking patient access and engagement to a new level. In February, we launched Report Reader. With the Cures Act requiring certain categories of clinical notes be made available through patients in their EMR, we thought we could do a step where patients who are getting access to this information, sometimes for the first time, they want notes in patient-friendly way, in a, in a way that they can actually understand, come to their appointment in a way where they're actually equipped to ask questions. So it turns from a counseling session to an action-based session, which obviously the physician is looking forward to as well. So patients can easily understand what might be a confusing term, a concerning term, a term that they normally may have gone to Wikipedia for, and we've actually layered that into the reports dynamically when they go in. And this is live across all of Pocket Health. It's not a, a cool demo in the AI booth. Um, they simply hover over a medical term. So words like unremarkable are no longer of concern and they don't require a doctor's time in translating them. It's empowering for the patient, which is obvious, but it also means that they can get to their appointment with more information and knowledge and now the actual provider site that enabled them with this understanding in the first place is in such a position of trust and respect because not only were you the provider that did the imaging for them, gave them a great personal experience, the tech was nice, it got in and out fast, but they actually understood for the first time what happened in that room, what that image showed, and they were able to have a more productive appointment. It's such a powerful place for the provider to be and you can do that just through adopting the right image exchange. So these are just two examples of functionality sets in the greater Pocket Health platform that shows how we're making our product better for everyone. And what we're seeing at Pocket Health is that having patients engaged in their care is key because they're willing to invest in their care. So as we're heading into one of the most challenging times in the industry from a financial perspective, we've built our model to help you reduce costs in that environment. So Pocket Health is a no-cost option for the hospital, um, and we have a copay model for patients that gives them way more value and control than they would have received with any other image exchange. It's a true legal record release. This imaging is it's a, under their control. They own it. It's not a portal. It's stored separately, and they can take their records with them wherever they go. And as part of this copay model, patients can actually... Um, uh, help support sites in terms of being able to deploy a industry-grade, enterprise-grade solution at no cost, which in this environment is especially impactful. And meanwhile, the patient through this copay model is able to, with the vast majority of plans, have entire reimbursement of their low fee to access the images in the first place. So the entire platform from end to end including DICOM auto-routing, sharing with other providers, receiving from other providers, and the patient access experience is fully funded through this copay model, which also has a financial assistance layer built in between. 
This isn't a new functional or new model. The vast majority of our 600 sites, over 95% are on this model with nearly a million patients on the platform. So it's something that really, we're talking about ROI. I can just draw an, in, an infinity sign, I guess. And you think about how we don't charge for service, maintenance, and we're able to fund the entire platform in a platform that's built by patients, for patients, funded by patients. And, and just, be, just before I wrap up, I think it's just good to talk about a couple of sites that have really seen the value here. Valley View Hospital, an integrated network of, of uh, specialty centers in Colorado. Um, they're a popular tourist destination I visited. I didn't have to visit, but it's a ski resort. I had to go there. Um, they had difficulty sharing imaging records. They were using a legacy vendor that everyone definitely has heard of. They implemented Pocket Health in under eight weeks, and they've gone to 100% zero CD. Meanwhile, at Unity Health in Toronto, they perform over 400,000 exams annually at two of their, at two of their three sites. Uh, we were able to implement Pocket Health. They save over 150,000 exams a year. They shut down their image library, repurpose that space into a check-in center, and all of those staff, and improve the security of image exchange. So we, we like to say here at Pocket Health, leave the network behind. Bigger is not better. Why build network upon network and try to solve for image sharing constraints? It just creates this intractable cycle of ineffective solutions that you then have to further invest in and further invest in, and literally the problem is not solved. You're measuring CD reduction on like a 5% less than next year, la less than last year, 5% less than last year. And that's, we can literally solve this with one fell swoop. It's not conceptual. We've now done it for seven years, and the proof is just in how the architecture is different. Not more features, not better service, though those, all of those are true. But literally, the architecture of how this works is patient-centric, which is what makes sense from every perspective. So anyways, uh, I'm clearly very passionate about this uh, problem and solving it. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for your time. Please do come by our booth. We have free coffee. You can literally just go in and leave. You don't have to talk to me there. Uh, or there's a lot of other people you can talk to if I was annoying. We're at booth 8012 in the other hall. And um, our CTO and co-founder will be there as well. We're doing at, uh, a bunch of AI demos over there as well. Oh, sorry, over there. And um, otherwise, shoot me a note. I can send you this deck. Um, if you want some good imaging memes, I can send you some of those. Um, and um, yeah, otherwise, thanks, and um, have a wonderful conference, everyone.